But we're supposed to walk over the enemy according to Luke. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, we can't afford to be foolish. People take the scriptures out of contact. They say if we drink or eat any deadly thing, it shall not hurt us. Okay. Ignorance can defeat us. Amen. Oh, if you know something that's poison, you'll be stupid to go and drink it. If you know a poison snake going to bite you, would you be stupid enough to put your hand down there? Yes, right. Would you let a scorpion, poison scorpion, bite your hand? You just put it down there. You ain't doing nothing but tempting. You're in the flesh. But the scripture means uh, in case you did not know something was poison. Amen. In case you did not see the snake moving around and it accidentally bit you then you will be, God will protect you. Amen? Amen? In the area. And you remember Paul was in the area where a poisonous ass bit him. They thought he was going to what? Die. But he kept on preaching. Amen? Uh -huh. So, it's not to be stupid enough to put yourself in the midst of temptation to be destroyed. Amen? Take up snakes in your hand. You know they're poison. You got to be crazy. You know they'll bite. So people are taking the word out. That's why I love the word. How many of you love the word today? Amen. This is the word of God. Amen. And I know that it is true. I know definite. You can't tell me anything else different. The word of God is true. Amen. And I praise God today because if it wasn't for Jesus Christ where would we be amen let's go to the scripture first of all I like to say the name of our subject is the great commission part number two over and go to St. Luke 24th chapter praise God Give you time to get there. We stopped the last time around verse 47 and 48. We're in the time when the people are not wanting to heed the word of God or listen to it. Right. Only thing we as people, as children of God, we must deliver the message to them. Deliver a message in such a way that they will not have an excuse to put on you when they stand before God saying, no one told me about Jesus. You give them no excuse when they stand before the judgment saying, no one told me about Jesus. Amen? So that's our commission. Command, according to verse 47, we know Jesus Christ told his disciples that they must preach repentance and remission of sin. That's verse 47 and Luke 24, St. Luke. They, mu they must preach repentance and remission and forgiveness of sin, letting the people know that when you repent, God will forgive you. God loves you that much because he gave his only begotten son, according to St. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's so much love that God has for us individually. We cannot explain a type of love. They say agape love, but I would say so love I can't explain myself today. How much love would it take for a person to lay down his life for his friends, he called us. He would go to a cross, be stretched out wide, be 
nailed to a cross, beaten, spit on, slapped, speared in the side to save a wicked generation. How much love can that add up to? You cannot figure out the love. Amen. The word of God said over in verse 47, we must re preach repentance and the forgiveness of sin. It should be preached in the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? It must be preached in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Buddha. Not in the name of Confucius or any other out of worship. Little G. Because our God is a jealous God. He will have no other little G God before him. Amen. Praise the Lord. This must be preached in the name of Jesus among all nations. Didn't you not know there are so many type of people that live in our city? So many different kind of nationalities. Amen. Some may need an interpreter, some may not. But let me tell you, as we as believers, true believers, we go out, we speak it into the atmosphere, amen, repentance, and you must, I say to you, think about this in faith. Sometimes you might not be able to get close to an individual that may be riding down a highway past you on the other lane. But this one thing that you can do, you can pray for them in tongues that God will get a hold to them if he have not already. That God will guide them in the path of righteousness. Amen. We can pray. We have powers as the Son of God to pray and people will be delivered and what set free. Hallelujah. We must continue to preach and be an example. Sometimes we say we are not but we know, God knows our heart, what example that we are, amen, that people, they see us. They see the seal on you. They see that you have been chosen by God. They see that you have been ordained by God. And some of them try to run away from you sometimes swiftly. They may see you coming by. Then all of a sudden they speed up. Some of them do not want to hear well, what God getting ready to tell you to speak to them. Amen? Have you seen it where people will just start to speed up? Seem like they, some want to turn a deaf ear. They start to go another way. They do not, some do not want to hear about Jesus, the Savior of the world. Amen? Let's move on. We must continue to preach. Live the life to be an example in this wicked society that we live in. How many of you know we live in, in a wicked society, a wicked of uh, ungodliness? People think everything they do is good. They must go for it. Do all of it that you can now while you are young. And so many young people think they are vulnerable. They think they cannot die. But we have found out lately that a lot of young people are perishing. A lot of them are going into eternity, whether they are born again or not. Saved or unsaved, they are heading into eternity. Amen. So how many of you know, and those may be watching today by television, know that the judgment is for the ungodly, not for the true believers. Because we gave our heart over to the Lord. How many of you have gave your life over? Amen. Amen. You are sold over into the kingdom of God. You are not like the prodigal son that decided to walk away from his inheritance. How many of you know there is an inheritance among the saints of God? Praise God. We must Continue to assemble yourself together according to Hebrews 10 and 25. Forsake not the assembly of yourself together as a man of son of yours, but exalting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Praise God. Let's move on. We have to continue 
to do the great commission that God has commissioned us to do. Let's go to verse 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. And Jesus Christ was telling the disciples, I was your greatest example. As you see me go to one place to another, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. Amen. Healing those that had leprosy. How many know that Jesus healed people that had leprosy? People that was dumb, could not speak, that could not talk. Amen. Those, he healed those that were deaf, could not hear. Amen. And Jesus was a witness before his disciples. And so is this for us, us today. We have seen some power of God moving in this, in this church here. We have seen God moving here. And let me tell you that we as a body of Christ is not scared to cast out devils in the name of who? Jesus. We should not be scared to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Now, if you go in your own name, surely you should be scared. But if you go in the name of Jesus, when you practice what you preach every day, when you pray and stay before the Lord every day, you should be fired up for Jesus Christ. You should be on fire. Amen. You should be in line with God's word, and you should be what? On the front line for Jesus Christ, firing. I mean, you know, they were shooting fire dots against us. But we got the shield of faith up. Yeah. Block off any attempt of the devil or the adversary to try to beat us down. Amen. And that's the authority that you have as a believer. Amen. You have been commissioned. Amen. You have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I don't want to get a little bit ahead of myself, but we will talk about that. Let's move on to... The next verse, 49. Jesus, writing is in red here. Jesus said, behold, look. I send the promise of my Father upon you. And what is this promise? To be baptized in the Holy Spirit and that with fire. Praise God. Spiritual baptism or spirit baptism is a promise to all true believers. Let me say it again. Spiritual baptism is a promise to all believers. There is no exception here. It's for anybody that want it. Praise God. Some choose not to have it. Some say it is not for today. But they are sadly mistaken. It is for right now. Because I'm getting ahead just a little bit. Jesus Christ sent back the comforter. Amen. Jesus Christ had his dispensation. Now we are in the dispensation of the what? Holy Ghost. Praise God. The promise is to all believers. To have what powers to do the works of Jesus Christ. We should be able to do the same works of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Let me take you to a reference over in St. John. 14th chapter, verse 26. Give you a little time to get there. St. John 14, 26. But the comforter, and I do believe John is the only one that, that uses this phrase. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father, God Almighty, will send in my name, in the name of Jesus. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, and how many witnesses do I have out here that is baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire bring back things to your remembrance, what you need to know for a different situation, for a different circumstance. I just told you earlier, 
Some job requires fast movement. They tell you, you got to go and do it. Your natural mind cannot perceive a lot of these things. Cannot grasp as fast as it should be. But it is the Holy Spirit that brings back to my remembrance what that person had said in order to help me to do my natural job. Can I get a witness? Amen. The Holy Spirit is here to help us to do what we should do. Amen. While we live here on earth. Praise God. It's here to aid us. And how many of you know that you are weak in your flesh, but you need the Spirit of God to give you strength? Glad to be baptized. Be happy to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Rejoice to be baptized, that you are baptized. Woo! Give him the highest praise. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Praise him. He sent the comforter whom the Father said. God the Father. Praise God. Sin in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise him. And there's another reference over in Acts 2. We won't go there, but you can read that. You already know by Acts 2 what happened when that Russian mighty wind came in. Praise God. Let's look at some more instructions that Jesus told his disciples over in the 49th verse. What did he say in the second part? But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Until you be endued with power from on high. He told them to remain in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere else. Stay right here. And sometimes that goes for us today. When God said, you stay right there. That's the place I want you to pray. That's the, that's the altar. That's the spot right there you're supposed to pray in. And a lot of people don't understand this. God, when God is so great, he's so powerful, he, he speaks to your spirit. He said, that's the place you need to pray, right over there. God got me in a certain place that I go and pray at. And let me tell you, I get evidence when I go there. I don't hear you in here. When you go to the place where God had told you, you will get evidence. Things will happen. Amen? Things will take place. He says, stay there in the room. Remain there. Don't go nowhere. Now, as we know of an act, there were people in Jerusalem at the time from everywhere. There were people that didn't even know where, why they was there. But they was there at Jerusalem. How many know, how many disciples was in that upper room? 120. Now, we don't want to go too far, but that's a few, a little information here. We already know about. Praise God. Um. Stay in Jerusalem, which is the headquarters, until you be endued with power to be clothed with. Amen. Oh, it's just like you're putting on your clothes. You're natural. To be clothed with the Holy Spirit is so beautiful. Amen. To be arrayed in the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's so beautiful. Beautiful to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and do I have some witnesses in the house of your experience of holy baptism by the power of God. How many witnesses do I have that have been baptized? You felt some fire. Oh, did you feel some fire? Where did it start at? Down in below the pelvis bone, pelvis, down there. The soulish area, the soul and spirit. The Holy Spirit collapsed, collapsed or crashed with the spirit of God that was already in you when you accepted Jesus Christ in your life. Amen? It collided. It gave you power to do the works that Jesus Christ done. Amen? Praise God. To be clothed with, to be endued with power from on high. According to Acts 2, the Holy Spirit sat on them, cloven tongues like as a fire. Not only did it lay on them, but it went down on the inside, and they were what? Filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. 
Praise God. Question mark for you, or those that may be listening. How can we do greater works? There's a reference over in St. John, the 14th chapter, verse 12. Hallelujah. And it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believe on me, he that believe on Jesus, the works that I shall, I, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall ye do. And he's talking to us today. There's something wrong here. There should be greater works. And I tell you, I'm very hungry for greater works. What about you out there? Or those that may be watching. Are you more hungrier today than ever before for a mighty move of God? Are you real hungry for a, just a supernatural experience, a new experience in the Holy Spirit? Amen. As you will be, as you don't walk around in your environment and someone that walking by you, all of a sudden they start to begin to praise God because the Holy Spirit in you is so powerful that it radiates off of you onto somebody else. Woo! I want to see a mighty move of God. Oh, I want to see the genuine move of God, not by the hands of man, but by the hand of God. I want to see it, people. What about you? I want, I'm just tired of, of the flesh. I want to see something else. Men have tried to do things in their own way, but they have done the wrong thing. They're, 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 but God want to do something different, people. God want to change things. Now, the revival is going to come through God. It's going to come through him. I tell you a reference over in Joel, second chapter Joel. He said he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. He didn't say save or what. He said all flesh. That let me know God going to give everybody a chance. No one will have an excuse not to receive Jesus Christ. God is so loving. This great commission that we own, God is so loving that he wished that no man would perish. That all would come into what? Repentance. God is a loving God. So full of love and compassion to come and send Jesus to reconcile men back to him. Hallelujah. We need to be in the area to do greater works. We need to speak in tongues that we have as never before. I said and I said again. Amen. Use the tongues as never before. Use the tongues when you get tired of it. I know your flesh is bucking against it, but use the tongues that God has given you. Use them to put the flesh in subjection. Put the flesh in in subjection. Use the tongues that God has given you. Amen. Praise God. Greater works we can do because Jesus Christ went back to his father. And how many of you know that Jesus Christ is making intercession for the saints of God? He is sitting down where? On the right hand of God. Amen. Praise him. As we move on down to the next verse. Look at verse number 50. And he led them, Jesus, and them out as far as Bethany. And look at the reference on Bethany. Bethany was about two miles outside of Jerusalem. They walked out two miles. <laughs> but look what else happened. Jesus lifted up his hands. He didn't say hand, hands. Lift your hands up today, somebody that may be watching. Hallelujah. Yes, he did. Oh, he released a blessing on his disciples. He passed the baton on. Now, he said, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. I have done all what I should have done on earth while I was here on earth. I did what you told me, Father. 
Now my time is at hand to depart from earth. But Jesus put both hands up. How many of you know that you got two hands? How many fingers do you have? Ten. What do that represent? Ten means to be what? A testimony. Ten means testimony. You testify to God when you raise your hand. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I thank you for all the blessings that you've stored up on me. Lord, I thank you for your grace. Lord, I thank you how you kept me when I couldn't keep myself. Lord, I thank you for keeping the enemy away from me. Oh, if it hadn't been for Jesus Christ, what would we do? Jesus blessed him. And verse 50, he invoked blessings into his disciples. He in, imparted blessings into the disciples. Amen. And so is it for us today. How many of you know that you are blessed today because Jesus has imparted into you his spirit in you. Amen. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ in you. Praise God. How I many of you know? In the beginning we win. At the end we will do what? Win. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. This is for us as true believers. He imparted the blessings as he stretched both of his hands towards heaven. Amen. He was surrendering to his father. God to God here. <laughs> My work is done. Testifying that through it all, he went through it for to reconcile men back to God. And our commission is plain today is to do the works of our father. Continue to bless one another as believers. And continue, continue to encourage one another. Amen. We as believers, true believers, must continue to encourage one another to continue to press on towards the mark for that great prize that we will receive. How many of you are ready to receive your great blessing from the Lord? Let's move on down to verse 51. And it came to pass while he blessed them Look what happened. He was parted from them. He left them. Praise God. And carried up into heaven. Jesus left in that cloud. Amen. Had his own elevator. <laughs> Had his own escort system. Amen. Had his own heavenly host, host to host him back into the glory land. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that day. To be in heaven with Jesus. Amen. Oh, how many know that Jesus got up out of here? He got up out of here. And how many of you are ready one day to say, I'm ready to get up out of here. Amen. I'm getting ready to get up and leave this old world behind. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more crying. No more hoping for tomorrow. Which we should not anyway. But we will be in peace with Jesus forever. Amen. For there is no real peace without Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. How many of you know there's no real peace without him? So many people out there are searching for peace in the wrong areas, but they do not have it. Jesus, this peace I give you, not as the world give, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. He parted up into heaven. He ascended up into heaven heaven amen he was in the supernatural level down here but he was total supernatural when he left earth amen because he was still down here somewhat in the body but it was a supernatural body physical body we can't explain total but it was supernatural amen he could eat and do all those things he can appear and disappear and appear when he wanted to Amen. But when he left this earth, he went back into his first status. God to God. Amen. Amen. And we say today, according to verse 52, they worship him. Now, Jesus Christ was the object of worship now. 
They know that Jesus Christ spoke it and it came to pass. A true prophet is no of what he says and it come to pass. Can I get a witness? When a true prophet says something, it will happen. It will manifest. It will be revealed. Amen. I encourage you today to keep walking and keep worshiping Jesus Christ. How many of you know there's joy in the Holy Ghost? When you got baptized in the Holy Ghost, you got joy, joy, joy on the inside. Praise God. And look at verse 53. And they continued in the temple. They didn't stop. That's what goal for us today. We cannot stop. We cannot take a detour. We got to continue to press on in this ministry. We got, got to continue to speak the word of God. May God bless you on this day. Until next time.